Welcome to Scientix TV. Today's episode is all about artificial intelligence. Everybody's talking about AI in education, but what is it? Is it going to take over the world or is it going to enhance our intellectual potential? Today, we're going to talk about the uses and regulations around AI in education in Europe, how AI will impact the future of STEM industry, and Isidora will, gonna, is going to give us some practical advice on how to use AI effectively for activities in the classroom. First, let's look at how AI can be used by teachers. Our colleague Ines did a bit of digging. Thank you, Agueda. Indeed, in our day and age, AI has become ever-present, and uh, so much so that we often forget what constitutes AI. This can be confusing or even scary, but there are many ways in which AI can be used to make a teacher's life easier. So, how can AI be useful? AI can uh, support teachers in their everyday tasks. Take, for example, ChatGPT. Everyone has heard about it, but not everyone knows that it can be used to help devise um, lesson plans for teachers. You can use it to devise a lesson plan for students in your grade about the topic they are studying. Just look through the lesson plan it provides and modify it for your students so that it fits your country's curriculum. It will even help you create handouts or quizzes based on your lesson. And we know that not all activities are for all students, so make it easier for them. AI can help you individualize lessons based on your students' personal needs. AI can even um, help create rubrics for certain assignments, and it allows also to check for plagiarism, um, even the stuff created by AI, so that's one less thing you need to worry about. Now, students can use AI also for themselves, but remember students, no cheating. Um, AI can make studying for quizzes a lot easier. Students can use it to create their own flashcards or study guides. And that's how you can make your learning experience more creative. Thank you, Ines. So it seems that AI can be used by teachers to create lesson plans. Let's put that to the test. Let's try with ChatGPTs. Now, ChatGPT, according to itself, is a computer program that can have text-based conversations with people and provide information or assistance, kind of like a smart chatbot. We asked one of our Scientix ambassadors, Yasmina Stuli, a teacher from Bosnia-Herzegovina, to tell us about her experience of using ChatGPT to create a lesson plan for her students. So I would like to do a STEAM lesson on the topic uh, of music. And today I want to see whether uh, ChatGPT can help me with some ideas. So here is my prompt. Let's see what it suggests. Materials, whiteboard and markers, projector. Okay, I have those. Headphones and a device for each student. Maybe not possible, maybe, maybe is. Musical instruments optional. The learning objectives. Analyze the connection between music and science. I like this. I like this objective uh, the most. So for the warm up, we play a short popular song. Okay. On the whiteboard, you write the words music and steam and exploring the connection between music, science, technology. Hmm, I don't think so. <laughs> I'm not sure that uh, students should know actually what STEAM is. They can just do the science and technology and engineering and arts and math without actually knowing about it all. So when it comes to this uh, uh, arts part, it's an excellent idea to have students design and create their uh, music albums covers, but they can also engage in creative writing. I like the fact how it combines um, music and math, and there is also use of technology. But what I actually don't understand, uh, I don't see enough of uh, the STEAM elements here. So I am asking 
for another uh, prompt. So I want uh, ChatGPT to give me more information about how to uh, uh, how does science and engineering in this plan relate to music. So let's see what it says. It says like introduction emphasizes the integration of different uh, steam elements into music, but this will not actually be interesting, I believe, to my students. Here is the science. This is much better. Uh, discuss the science of acoustics and how engineers design instruments to optimize sound quality. Well, as an English language teacher, I really don't understand the science of acoustics. Also, I'm not an expert on sound waves. Digital music production, and this is the part that my students would probably like. So the lesson plan was really good. Uh, the arts and technology and math part were really okay, but I wasn't really satisfied with a science and engineering part. So I asked ChatGPT for more clarification and it gave me more. And it seems that uh, the more we ask, the more ChatGPT learns from what we actually want. It seems as if it's learning from uh, chatting with us. So I believe I will use a lot of the elements uh, suggested by ChatGPT and continue on chatting to find some more fun and interesting and engaging STEAM ideas. Thank you. Well, that's quite impressive, really. It's also a bit scary. Well, a lot of people think so too. And the European Union policymakers think that it's important that AI be strictly regulated for the protection of all citizens and students in particular. Let's connect back with Ines, who will tell us about the EU regulations on, an, on AI. While AI might become your partner to help you or improve your classes, um, you should still keep in mind that if not used carefully, it can cause harm. For example, you might fear that AI might replace teachers, that students might be under greater surveillance, or even that um, AI will discriminate against certain groups through the algorithm. To avoid these future risks, the European Commission has been working on specific, specific legal tools. For now, we have two big resources. We have the regulatory framework on AI and we have the guidelines on AI and data in education and training. Okay, so let's start with the regulatory framework on AI. Its goal is to guarantee the safety of people and businesses by identifying the specific levels of risk associated with the AI systems and the restrictions that should apply. The uh, European Commission has determined that AI technology used in educational and vocational training that determines someone's course of life, like scoring exams, needs to be classified under high risk. This means that a stricter set of rules be, will be applied um, to ensure traceability, to avoid discrimination, and to keep appropriate records. In 2022, the European Commission published the guidelines on AI and data in education and training as part of the Digital Education Action Plan. The goal of the guidelines is to support teachers and students on their journey towards safely integrating artificial intelligence in their classes. And they cover a wide range of subjects. AI in education is indeed on everybody's mind at the moment. In fact, it was central to the Data for Learning webinar series organized by European Schoolnet on the topic of meaningful and ethical use of data in schools. The key lessons from the webinars are summarized in a report that was just made available to the public, which covers topics such as ethical use and collection of student data, the impact of algorithm on teacher autonomy, and of course, the developing role of AI in education. You can learn more about the webinar series and explore its very interesting findings using the link to the report available in the description of this video. AI is of course going to have a 
significant impact on STEM jobs as the skills and requirements for some STEM careers might shift. So it's important for teachers to stay informed and access teaching resources on the topic. Let's connect with the Airbus Foundation, one of these our STEM Alliance partners and a strong supporter of AI. We have with us Didier Laval, with, who is a content advisor for the Airbus Foundation Discovery Space. And he joins us to present the AI app that Airbus Foundation has created, where it helps teachers and students understand the, how AI is connected with our lives. The Airbus Foundation is about to, uh, to publish a web app, which is a serious game for teenagers. And it can be used by teenagers, teachers, educators of all sorts and will be focused on the topic of artificial intelligence. It's a narrative game, which means it's a game where you follow a story, you will have four teenagers in the story who will interact, who are chatting together, who question themselves about the topic of AI in the world around them. And the player will not only follow the story, but also interact with the story, make some choices, uh, take some positions about the various aspects of, uh, of the story and about AI. And we cover various topics because the, the game is like a bit like a series in eight episodes with eight narrations. Uh, and we have one about health and AI, one about AI and art and creation, one about AI and education, of course, uh, one about AI and jobs. It can be used by any teacher who wants to tackle the topic of AI or any topic related to AI in the classroom. So you might be interested because you are about to speak about AI in science class or because you are about to speak about AI and the world in a more, let's say, social uh, perspective. But it can also be because you are speaking about disinformation and we have one episode about AI and deepfakes. So it may be used in class with having teenagers explore an episode and then have a group chat or a debate about the topic together. It can be given to the to, to the students so that they can explore the app in the evening. One very nice way to use it is an introduction to any topic. You want to speak about AI and creation, about deepfakes and disinformation, or about AI and education, or even AI and driving vehicles. This is a great way to dive into the topic and to have at the same time technical elements, social elements, ethical questions, and get ready to have uh, some interest and maybe already some questions, some curiosity from the, from the students. One of them is about jobs and artificial intelligence. And here, the, the, the main topic will be how is the artificial intelligence transforming the, our jobs today? There are many other elements because if a student wants to become an artist or a creative person, uh, obviously the episode about creation and art and AI will be quite important because it will talk also about the transformation of the sector. Uh, likewise, if a student wants to become a teacher, the, the, the topic about education and AI will tackle how AI can support teacher, can support people with specific learning needs, uh, or how, uh, or what kind of ethical as aspects we, sh we should be careful with. Um, so we have a, a multitude of elements for about the future jobs, and one episode especially about the transformation of the job market. The app will be published in January. It will first come out in French and English, followed by Spanish and German, and who knows, it might be coming out in more languages. Now make sure to follow scientists to be informed when the app is released. And you know, it'll be just on time for the 2024 STEM Discovery Campaign, so you'll be able to use it in class with your students and tell us how you used it during the campaign. Like each month, Let's join Isidora for Science in Action, which is also about AI. Hi Isidora, I hear you have something different for us today. Hi Aida. Yes, today's experiment is not going to be an experiment. Or is it? We're going to ask ChatGPT to create some classroom experiments for us. But how to do that? Everything starts with a good prompt. And how do you write good prompts? Well, let's ask ChatGPT. Whoa, who are you? I'm chatty. You don't want people just staring at a screen for this segment, do you? Um, you're right. So how should then I write a good prompt? You should talk to me like I'm one of your friends who really needs things explained step by step and be very precise. 
Let's go through it together, okay? Okay. You type as I explain. That way. You should start your prompt by clearly stating the aim of the experiment. What concept or principle do you want to demonstrate? You could write, aim, to teach students about chemical reactions and how pH can affect reaction outcomes. Okay, and then? Then you could ask follow-up question or request background information, if you want. I will continue from where we stopped. For example, can you explain the concept of chemical reactions and the role of pH in simple terms? Okay. Then you tell me about your classroom, age of students, level of difficulty, and what materials you have available for the experiment. For example, can you suggest a basic experiment to teach chemical reactions and pH to high school students? I have access to vinegar, baking soda, pH test strips, and various acids and bases. So this helps you. And can I adapt this? Of course. That's my favorite thing about, well, me. Now we can brainstorm. You can keep asking follow-up questions to change the results. You could type, adapt for advanced chemistry students. Or, adapt this experiment to be used in 7th grade. And if you don't like what I'm suggesting you can ask me to improve the results again. And what about if it doesn't work? I could probably predict any challenges. Ask me, what are common challenges in the acid-base reaction experiment, and how can we address them? And can you do more for me? All you have to do is ask, silly. Type, use the information gathered to create a detailed lesson plan, including objectives, materials, procedures, safety measures, and expected outcomes. And you can do this in any language you want. Oh, strava, pa to ću morati da probam. And don't forget, you can have a conversation with Chatty and all of her AI friends. So if you don't like your lesson plan about native plants and you find it too boring for your young students, you can ask AI to add a fun component to it. So it can make your whole lesson in as a Minecraft simulation. So go ahead and try it for yourself and let us know in the comment section. My name is Isidora Salim and this is Science in Action. See you next time. Isidora will be back next month, minus Chatty, with a new classroom experiment. Make sure to share your experiments through the form linked in the description to this video for a chance to be featured in our next Scientix TV episode. In December, the Scientix TV episode will be all about classroom experiments. Well, that's it for this special presentation of Scientix TV on artificial intelligence in education. We hope it helped shed some light on a very exciting yet confusing topic. We want to hear from you. Do you look forward to using AI in your practice? Let us know in the comments. In fact, make sure to like, comment and share this video. And see you next month for a new episode of Scientix TV where we see the world through STEM glasses.